y'all here this evening. We'll take the hymns and turn to hymn number 512. 512. Singing all four verses of Jesus is all the world to me. Well, saying. Oh, 
ourselves some going through rehab uh, and then uh, some going to have some uh, upcoming procedures. Uh, one of our dear friends, uh, she had uh, some back surgery in and uh, the lady that you know, lady that cuts my hair, uh, she's going to have some fusion done in a week or so. And uh, she asked me yesterday when I got the haircut uh, to pray for her. So we met and she and I held hands and, and we prayed and turned it over to the Lord. Uh, but I remember Pat, uh, Bobby Kim and Stephen White Rainbow. Billy Joe Sprouse and Linda Snow, Wanda Tucker, and all the seniors and caregivers and family, and all the church leadership. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, Thanksgiving and pray. My, my friend Wayne Ruth, he only has 10 more treatments for uh, prostate cancer at, at 45. There's 10 to go. He's, he's doing real good. Praise the Lord uh, for that. Uh, and so uh, then we want to remember the Collins family, Reverend uh, W.L. Collins, and that family passed away. Uh, Dolores uh, Mark Muller, uh, Reverend John Bowen, uh, Michael Dixon, Bill Franklin, Peyton Haskins, uh, Bobby Hine, Oliver Jones, Michael K. Jamie, Isaiah, Ted Ray, uh, Martin Ryan, Reverend Gabriel Lanes, uh, Wayne Murphy, praise the Lord for that, and Reverend Stephen, Steve Simpson in the uh, Aiken Baptist Association. We need to remember our Southern Baptist Convention, uh, all his uh, uh, leadership in the, in the Southern Baptist. And, uh, we need to uh, remember uh, all of them and then uh, the leaders of our country, uh, the news. Said this afternoon, and uh, this man tried to get to, uh, Chief Justice uh, Cameron, and they caught him and locked him up, and he's been charged with uh, attempted murder. Uh, people have known uh, bonkers in this country, and, and there's more shootings and killings and the things happening uh, all around. Just like uh, the week over there in, in the valley area, a man uh, choked his wife to death. And uh, he dug a, was digging a hole to bury in the backyard, and he had a heart attack and died. He exerted himself too much. And so we, you don't never know uh, what's going to happen. Uh, a man uh, just shot his, uh, shot his wife from around. Shot his cell. I don't think he killed his wife. He shot, shot his cell. How many people have gone crazy? And we need to be in much prayer. And they, they're saying that it's going to be uh, more prevalent uh, as we uh, go along in these next months and years. And, and churches are going to be uh, targeted more and more. And so we need to uh, be very aware of what's going on. And, if a stranger comes in, we need to be very concerned. Um, I might have to stop bringing my pistol and laying it right here just in case. I do have a permit to carry it. But they, there's an 1800 law still on the books that the pastor can carry a pistol in the pulpit in the state of South Carolina because of bad deacons. Not just. <laughs>
Well, we're so blessed uh, because of what, uh, how you watch over us, how you take care of us, uh, boy, how you allow us to be to be born in, in this country. I uh, want with all the uh, privileges and uh, blessings that we have. Uh, what are we going to we're going to lift up this nation. I uh, want before you call the grace. Uh, Lord, what we need more than anything in the world is what we need for you to reach down and Lord, bring about a great revival that will start somewhere and, and spread across this land. I uh, want that from, the, uh, from uh, uh, the pulpit to the pew, uh, from the White House across this land. I uh, want that uh, the Holy Spirit of God would do a great, great work uh, in the hearts and lives of, of individuals and more than uh, people who are in, a, in authority would have their eyes and their hearts open more than they would uh, want to see the need to, to turn back uh, to God. And Lord, put you first and foremost in all uh, what that we do and, and undertake uh, Lord, in, this, in this nation. Uh, we, we thank you, Father, for the Christian people uh, that's still uh, very evident in, in this country. And we pray for the anointing of your spirit upon them and, and in their hearts and lives. Uh, Lord, that they would, they would pray as they never have prayed before. I uh, want to call upon you. I uh, want that you would turn uh, this nation around. Because only you are able, I uh, want to do that. I uh, want they can't pass a law.
Spirit of God, and they were they were filled with power from on high, and they were bold as they went out. We studied the life of Paul. And I don't believe there's probably anyone that we know of or have read of uh, that is, was any closer uh, to the Lord uh, in the New Testament than, than Paul. Look at all the books he wrote. So they, they fasted and they prayed and they sent them out uh, to the lost sheep of Israel. Some out of souls. In chapter 11, that's where the church was given that nickname, Christian. Christ was. And excuse me, chapter 13, where they finish and pray and they, and they go out to the whole world. Go into this town and start a church. Go in this town and start a church. Church planners. On the mission field. Doing great work. First of all, I want to talk to you about the marks of a Christian. First of all, they honor their Savior. In their speech, in their attitude, in their commitment. The Bible says they, they worship the Lord. They worship. They honor Him doctrinally. Preach the word. He was the subject of their of their preaching and their teaching everywhere they went. It was all about Jesus. We have to be careful that we want to get we want to get recognized. We want to be honored. We want to be revered. I remember growing up, and uh, the evangelists would come in. And, uh, back then, you know, you, you know, revival would last sometimes two, three weeks. And that man would get up there, and he'd preach, and he'd get soaking wet, shucking the corn. The little boys, little, little, little boys, they'd take the Bible, and they'd go to the preacher, and the service, and pass the preacher, would you sign my Bible? Revered the man, the man of God. Honored the man of God. Warned him, sign, sign your mouth. Man of God, you're going to preach. Sometimes you preach an hour or two hours. I never will forget that camp I, I went to that. That guy preached over, over two hours. I felt like I'd been there 15 minutes. And never over the mile. sin. They hated sin. Preached on sin. I guess one more hell fire damnation type sermons, you know, back in the day. Ended up being in the, in the heart of uh, where all the heathens were, heathenism, and, and uh, we're uh, saturated with, uh, with uh, gross forms of immorality. What we got going on in America today? You read the paper where uh, the Methodist Church is split over lesbianism and homosexuality. Even though Antioch, if they had a great church, uh, the place of Antioch uh, was filled with gross sins. All kinds of stuff uh, was going on everywhere. All kind of forms of vice. It was just a, a sinful place. It, hey, it was a field that was right under harvest for these men of God to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, repentance of sin, and in turn. I was reading the other day about this, this preacher, I can't remember his name. We preached a sermon years ago. Turn. Or burn. Turn to burn. It 
And it wasn't even in his sight that we would have him around us. Perversions, unbridled passions that accompanied up uh, at uh, pagan places uh, in Antioch. Just terrible things going on. The church in Antioch hungered for sanctification. They wanted, they wanted to be separate uh, from, from the world and from all of that stuff uh, that was going on in the neighborhood. In the neighborhood. And so they prayed and they committed themselves, set themselves apart. And it became so, so uh, visible and so known as why they were called Christians in Antioch. In a city filled with a uh, uh, living prosperity going on, full of, full of uh, uh, pleasure, uh, all kinds of things to do pleasure wise. And that fills the carnal appetites. Look what's going on in America. I mean, it's everywhere. Sin is, is, is everywhere, wherever you go. So you sat there. So she made her way to the 
bicycles and, and dolls and things at Christmas time to children that were going to have a Christmas. Mission work. This church is not only been reached by God, but, but it was reaching out. Thank you, Bob. 
wonderful privilege of being able, Lord, to uh, look into your holy word. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the Christian people of the war and the church. And we pray, Father, that in these coming days, Lord, that we want to say great and mighty things that place. Now, what you told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 33, 3, call on me. And I'll answer thee, and I'll show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not, that you never seen before. Lord, we, we desire to see something wonderful happen every time we meet. And Lord, we, when we come together, we, we expect, expect to hear good news that someone got saved into the family 